Hello everyone. I'll be uh, showcasing my data pack. Uh, this is iEdit Vanilla Edition. There's also an edition that uses the mod MVT Crafting. Now, that mod is in my opinion a bit better than the Vanilla Edition, but there's some unique features that only the Vanilla Edition has. Now, for MB for item edit, the goal of item edit is to allow you to edit item names and descriptions of that data pack. So step one, you need to make the item edit station. Now you can make them in any four direction. So we place the anvil like this, then step on top of it and you'll make an item edit station. It works in all four directions. Please note the orientation of the three item frames. They need to be, they'll be red, green, and blue. Those colors change a lot for the recipe. For the recipe support. And also the item frame can be any orientation as long as it's within this block. And I don't recommend trying to overlap item edit stations. It's probably not a good idea. Now, I'll show you some features. Number one, the most basic use of my edit. You grab the materials. So, I want to rename the swords to pool. So, let's get rename tags ready. Pool. Sword. Then this final one will be for a description on it. Okay. Now we do the formatting. So let's do cool first. Place it. Actually, it's just survival mode. Also grab the few extra little tags so it show you those five features. Now if I place in this for cool, and now I choose a formatting option. Let's make it light blue. Oh, wrong way around. Remember, order matters a lot with the recipes. So now it's light blue. And now if I put this in the anvil, it will entirely ruin it. So make sure not to do that. So, and sorry, okay, was I? So now it's cool. Let's make it a uh, bold. Now we got cool all done. Let's do sword. Sword will make uh, underlined. Wrong way around again. Underline. And make it strike through. Let's make it a uh, purple. Got that red too. Uh, now let's do gray. Go red. Make it this. As you can see. Now have cool sword row. Now we gotta combine the three. So for that, cool and sword makes cool sword. Now you'll please note in the order you put them in. If you place the other order, it'll make sword cool. You probably don't want that. Oh, 
and it also leaves one name tag alone. So it doesn't duplicate name tags at all, it just makes it so that you don't lose any name tags. So you can reuse corn. Sword bro. Okay. Now then, let's do a description next. Let's make this one. Let's use the bone beetle on this. You'll see why I'm doing that in a second. Uh, if you try and notice the difference before, it's slanted. And now, it's straight. So that's what the bone beetle does. And now let's make it. Uh, gonna need a gold nugget next. Now, what we do is we take this guy, the cool sword bro. No, actually, first, we take him. Damage and we combine it with gold nugget. Oh, wrong way. Damage, gold nugget. If you look at it now, it's now on its lore. And you can do that infinitely. Every gold nugget you add. We'll just add another thing to the bottom. Now, please note you can change the name however you want, but it will not change that. And also, if you don't have a name on the item, if you try and combine it, it will take no name at all. And now we have what we want our sword to look like. Now, let's say you want. Make sure you make a copy before you apply this. Just so you can do other things with it. How do you do that? Well, you take this, and you take an empty name tag. And ta da! You made a copy of the sword bro. So you simply put this in, an empty name tag, and you can make copies of it. Now, how you apply it, you put your item there, your name there, and boom, you can apply it. Make sure to put the enchantments on before you do this, since it will entirely remove like uh, your ability to rename the item, or you can put it through the anvil. So, make sure to apply all the enchantments before you do anything. Now we got this, but what else can these, these cool name tags be used for? Well, you can put them on mobs. And mobs as well, so there's that. That's quite useful. Beyond that, we also got another thing to look at. And that is a final thing here, item blocking. You can still edit this item name, for example, if you want to change it to just He could. And oh no, all my stuff is gone, including that cool bit of lore. So I don't want that to be possible. So you put in honey honeycomb. And now once you put honeycomb, I can no longer do that. Also if I rename this gold nugget here to be this if you drop any renamed item at all into water, specifically cauldron, it will reset it, removing all special states about it. Or should not fix that. But if you lock it with honeycomb, it will no longer do that. And now you got this. It's all good. The sword is stuck like that forever. Now. Just get rid of these things, no longer needed. Let's move on to my next demonstration. About demonstration.
Now, what we're going to be doing here is showing three different ways to make a useful currency or item to use in an item filter. Those are two uses for this, really. You can make a currency, a key card, uh, an item to use purely in like redstone item filters. That's the basic use of this, since you can make an item that's unduplicatable without specific knowledge of something you would normally know. So, well, unless you use like real dupers that can duplicate items. Talk about recreating it with this setup. Now, let's first of all name all these something cool. Coins. Give it a golden name. Put orange one way around. So now we have that. Let's also make sure that we have to redo that. This is also an example of what bone meal does. Bone meal resets everything about it. So now we have coins. Now let's duplicate this three times. Now let's apply it to all three of these guys. And now I have three coins. Now, next step, we need to go ahead and give it special stuff. For that, what we're going to need to do, there's a few methods. The first and easiest to see method is simply put in a bit of text you want to hide on it. Let's make it red just for the hell of it. And then do this. And then finally, the sermon at least. Move it down. Now it's on the lore. Simply remove that. And now, boom! We got special lore. Would you look at that? Now no one could tell what numbers we put in there, and it's hidden. And now, that's the first method to make a hidden number or bit of text on the coin on an item. For key card use, uh, anything really. Now, next option is to use a comparator. You may ask, what does comparator do? No, it needs to be applied to the name tag. Well, if you use a comparator on a name tag, I think it does need to be a special name tag. There we go. Then you apply it. It still needs to be a special name tag. Put that down one more. I don't know, you can probably add this to the name originally. Now you got a coin. Well, if I just use command here, let's try to see how this show you this. If I take 
two gold nuggets. Grab a name tag. Grab the narrator. If I rename the narrator to one, two, three, four, five, then I can apply it to a name tag. Test. Get a special name tag that's different. It even works back if you notice. Now, then, if I apply one, I get this. If I apply the other, I get this. And you'll notice they still do not stack. You may wonder why. Well, quite simple, really. If you look at its data, you'll see this one has nothing special about it besides its name. And this one has a little bit of hidden stuff on it. Specifically the numbers 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5 from this. Now, there's one final method to make it special. And that's with the trigger command. And that's cr trigger set custom model data, which my data pack adds. And then we do 12. And now it has a custom model data of 12, making it different from its previous self. If we set 13, it no longer stacks with itself, with the 12. So this is 13, this is 12, they no longer stack. And you can actually use custom model data to change the texture of items based off that number. For example, 13, it could look like uh, an apple. Uh, 15, it could look I don't know, a dragon head, or 16, it could look like, I don't know, a cool magic sword. You can change the texture with a resource pack depending on that number, which is the reason why I added it, just in case you wanted to use it to, uh, to add custom textures to your items, or just make them special. So as that, it is good to note that if you lock a custom model data item. And then you try and set it to something else, it no longer works because the item is locked. Now, final thing is the sides. I added something special to them. Here's an example of a little name tag I made with a whole bunch of description stuff. You can actually make multiple lines on descriptions as I've shown before. Now, uh, if you do it like this, it will just apply the name to it. And that's not what I want to show you. That's pretty obvious. If you do it the reverse order, however, see, no name, you're like, what's going on? Well, it's a custom sign. And if you place in creative mode, you get that. But issue is, in survival mode, if you place this custom sign, it doesn't do that. It just places it normally. Which is my fix to this, is if you type in this exact phrase on the top line of a sign, dollar sign, capital R, replace, dollar sign, this phrase right here, and then you drop your special sign on it, it's going to replace it and give you your sign back. So this allows you to put more than one color on a sign. Now, this is about it for this. Oh, and by the way, just for note, if you remove the green uh, uh, item frame, these guys no longer work. They're just decorative into particles. So yeah. <laughs> and if you remove any one of them, there's going to be issues. So, more specifically, that I can't get the item. So, it's not going to be able to craft. So, you can't technically use these guys as decorations, but that's basically useless. Anyway, that is all for now. I hope you liked like, this data pack, and I hope you download it. And maybe check out my other cool data packs. Goodbye.